Okay, good morning and welcome to the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you. Well, it is the start of a brand new week and in the next 30 minutes, we'll be getting you the biggest news stories that you might have missed during the night and also the stories that are likely to unfold in the day ahead. Let us start with the headlines. Samajwadi Party, Telangana Rashtri Samiti, Shiromani Akali Dal and JDU support simultaneous Lok Sabha and Assembly polls. DMK, TMC oppose it as Law Commission's two-day consultations with political parties concludes. JDU to contest 2019 general election as a BJP ally. Party to, however, go to alone for assembly polls in Mizoram, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Authorizes its president Nitish Kumar to finalize party stand on political issues. South Korean President Moon Jae-in begins a four-day first state visit to India. Ways to boost trade and defense cooperation to be discussed during talks with Prime Minister Modi. Both leaders to jointly launch new Samsung plant in Noida as part of Make in India initiative. Eighty-five people killed and over 50 missing in floods and landslides in Japan. Record rainfall in western parts of the country forced two million people to flee their homes. Era receives a three times the usual rainfall for the whole of July. And the gymnast Deepa Karmakar scripts history becomes first Indian to clinch gold at a global event. Returns in style after nearly two years layoff from a career-threatening injury. Our top story this morning, the Law Commission wrapped up its two-day consultations with political parties on the feasibility of holding simultaneous elections for Lok Sabha and State Assemblies on Sunday. The Samajwadi Party, Telangana Rashtriya Samiti, Shiromani Akali Dal and the JDU have supported the notion, notion of a one nation, one election. Samajwadi Party said that the process of simultaneous elections should be started from 2019 itself. And AIA DMK said that it was not against the one nation, one election, but certain practical and serious issues need to be settled first. On the other hand, Trinamool Congress, CPI, DMK, Ahmadmi Party and Goa Forward Party have opposed the concept. Now, DMK firmly opposed the idea of simultaneous polls to the Lok Sabha and state legislature, terming it as a complete misadventure that will decimate the federal structure. However, TDP has adopted a more cautious approach and has questioned the availability of EVMs. Samajbadi Party लोक सभा और देश की समस्त विधानसभाओं के चुनाव एक साथ कराने के पक्ष में है। है। दो ये प्रक्रिया 2019 के लोकसभा चुनाव के साथ ही प्रारंभ की जानी चाहिए। 2019 के साथ ही ये नहीं कहा कि ले जाएं। लोक कमीशन का जो सुझाव आया है, उस पर हमारी पार्टी ने प्रस्ताव के जरिए रिएक्ट किया है हम एक साथ चुनाव कराए जाने के पक्ष में लेकिन जो हमारा जो हमारा सैद्धांतिक रूप से विचार और मकसद है वो ये है कि इसका व्यवहारिक क्रियान्वयन को लेकर के हमारी कुछ ऑब्जेक्ट ये इतना आसान नहीं है जितना इसका विरोध हम इसलिए नहीं कर सकते कि ये सस्ते चुनाव कराने की गुड गवर्नेंस की दिशा में ब्लैक मनी पर थोड़ा बहुत हल्ला बोलने की दिशा में ये बहुत सकारात्मक कदम वी हैव सबमिटेड आवर ओपिनियन टुडे वेयर वी हैव मेंशन दैट वी आर इन फेवर ऑफ साइमल्टेनियस पोल फॉर बोथ द लोकसभा एंड द स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर असेंबलीज सो दैट द इलेक्टेड गवर्नमेंट्स एट द स्टेट लेवल एंड एट द सेंट्रल कुड फंक्शन अप्रोप्रिएटली for the elected period of five years without wasting time in elections across the country. It's not practically possible. Uh, to be very precise, the federal structure has to be upheld, it has to be protected, and um, democracy has to be upheld. Whether it is expenditure, 
or democracy? If that question arises, democracy is the answer. If that comes, the reply, then the simultaneous elections would not be practically possible and feasible. On to the other top story, the JDU in its national executive meeting in the national capital on Sunday announced that it will fight the 2019 general election along with the BJP as its ally. The party also decided to give all the power to parties the national president and Nitish Kumar to decide on various political issues. Meanwhile, party spokesperson KC Tyagi said that the decision about sharing of seats has not come up for discussion yet. He said that a JDU will contest election in Mizoram, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh on its own. He also rejected media reports that a JDU is helping BJP and added uh, that they are neither supporting nor opposing them. The party's the national executive meeting was attended by its uh, top leaders, including a party president and Bihar chief minister Nitish Kumar. selected <laughs> ना ही किसी को हराने के लिए ना ही किसी को जिताने के लिए अब कई प्रिंट मीडिया के साथ ही लेते कि बीजेपी की मदद कर हम ना बीजेपी की मदद कर रहे हैं ना बीजेपी का हम समर्थन कर रहे हैं ना विरोध कर रहे हैं और ना किसी और का कर रहे हैं हम जब लिमिटेड जो हमारे स्रोत रहे हैं और जो हमारे साधन हैं उसके तहत इन चारों राज्यों में जनता दल यूनाइटेड अपने बलबूते पर चुनाव लड़े ये ना किसी को हराने के लिए है ना किसी को जिताने के लिए मैं फिर दोहराना चाहता हूँ and South Korean President Moon Jae-in is on a four-day state visit to India. And on his arrival, he was received by the Minister of State for External Affairs, V.K. Singh, in Delhi. He is being accompanied by First Lady Kim jong Sook. During the visit, uh, the President will hold a talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi on key issues such as the situation on the Korean Peninsula and ways to boost trade and defence cooperation. Several agreements are expected to be signed after the two leaders hold talks on Tuesday. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj will call on the visiting leader today. Moon Jae-in will also attend the India-Korea Business Forum today. Along with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he will visit the Gandhi Smriti and launch the next uh, Samsung unit in Noida today. And on Sunday, the visiting dignitary visited the Akshardham Temple. The main working day will be July 10th. Uh, in the morning, uh, as usual, there will be a ceremonial reception which will be accorded to President Moon. And uh, this will be followed by uh, official level talks uh, between Prime Minister and President Moon at Hyderabad House. Uh, the two leaders will also address the India ROK CEO's roundtable. Uh, we also expect some agreements to be signed uh, during the visit. Uh, in the evening, uh, President Moon will meet Honorable Rashpati Ji and uh, Honorable Rashpati Ji will also host a banquet in honor of the visiting dignitary. All right, uh, to get the perspective on uh, the visit of Moon Jae-in, we have with us uh, our foreign affairs editor Akhilesh Suman joining us. Uh, Akhilesh, a very good morning. So this is uh, Moon Jae-in's uh, first state uh, visit to our country and it comes after, you know, Prime Minister Modi had visited South Korea in May 2015 uh, during which this uh, bilateral relationship uh, was elevated to a special strategic partnership. Uh, what is the significance of this visit? Uh, you know, Ashwarya, Prime Minister Nair Modi is giving very important, uh, 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 you know, status to South Korea as far as our relationship is concerned. I don't know that the Prime Minister today will be at three occasions with the South Korean president. And with this only you can understand that how India is giving importance uh, to South Korea. And, you know, South Korea is a small country, but uh, one of the highest technological level it has attained. And the way India is trying to uh, give uh, impetus to industrial uh, and, uh, you know, revolution in service industry, manufacturing industry, and South Korea is very capable and able in these all fields. And that is why uh, Moon Jae-in, before coming to India, he has told that he will assist and he will cooperate with India in the fourth industrial revolution in the world. And uh, that is why, you know, that uh, today there will be inauguration of uh, world largest mobile manufacturing uh, center in Noida in the, in the evening. And before that, he will, uh, both Prime Minister Nair Modi and President Moon will address the business forum. And that is 
in a way that uh, it means growing uh, concern in the Southeast Asian region when China and India are competing, not only in strategic terms, but also in uh, economic and financial terms. This meeting and this visit is very important. It is happening after four years. Uh, and then, uh, you know, that uh, four years before the South Korean president has come here. So you can understand lots of preparations were going on between the two countries. And it was found that it, this is an opportune moment that uh, the, uh, the meeting should be held here. And some uh, important decisions will be taken as far as uh, make in India, industry, and also as far as the uh, politics going on in South Korean and North Korean uh, issues when denuclearization is on the agenda of the world. So it is going to be very important, uh, you know, as far as. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Akhilesh, uh, for all those updates. We'll keep coming back to you for more on uh, that story in the subsequent bulletins. On to some other news now. The Human Resource Development Ministry mandated committee to draft a new education policy has got a third extension. The K. Kasturi Rangan Committee, headed by former ISRO chief, was supposed uh, to submit its report by 30th of June. It now has time till 31st of August to give final shape to the draft of the policy. The existing national education policy was framed in 1986 and uh, revisited in 1992. Now, a new education uh, policy was uh, part of the BJP manifesto. Apart from uh, Kasturi Rangan, the committee has eight members, including mathematician Manjul Bhargav. And the panel will also take into account the report of a panel headed by former Cabinet Secretary TSR Subramaniam, submitted in May 2016, suggesting measures to strengthen the sector, catering to over 300 million students. And now a look at the events that are lined up for the day. Here is the day ahead. The Supreme Court is likely to give its verdict on uh, the review plea of uh, three out of the four convicts uh, sent to the death row in the Nirbhaya gang rape and murder case. The four death row convicts uh, have not filed a review petition. The Apex Court uh, in its 2017 verdict had upheld the capital punishment awarded to them by the Delhi High Court and the Trial Court in the case of a gang rape and murder of a 23-year-old paramedic student on 16th of December 2012. Home Minister Rajnath Singh will chair a two-day plenary meeting of the North Eastern Council in Shillong today. Singh would discuss development projects with the chief ministers and the governors of the North Eastern states in the presence of Union Minister of State for Development of North Eastern Region, Jitendra Singh. Singh would also evaluate the security and connectivity issues in the region. And the Bombay Stock Exchange will launch a platform to list new age companies in sectors like IT, biotechnology and life sciences, 3D printing, space technology and e-commerce in a bid to start, boost uh, startups. To be eligible for listing, a company needs to have a pre-issue paid up equity share capital of a minimum of 1 crore rupees. The company should be in existence for a minimum period of 3 years on the date of filing the draft prospectus of the BSC. News from Jammu and Kashmir now, where an encounter broke out between security forces and militants in Kupwara district of Jammu and Kashmir late last evening. Security forces launched a cordon and surge operation in the forest area in Handwara, in the North Kashmir's Kupwara district, the search operation turned into an encounter after the militants fired upon the security forces. One terrorist has been killed. Meanwhile, mobile internet services have uh, been restored in Central and North Kashmir, but uh, remain suspended in South Kashmir districts. The services were suspended across the valley following the death of three civilians uh, during clashes between security forces and stone-pelting protesters. On to some other news, uh, India has conveyed to Russia its unwillingness to go ahead with the joint development of a fifth generation fighter aircraft primarily due to the high cost involved in the project. Now, PTI is causing, quoting official say, sources as saying that negotiations between the two countries on the much ambitious projects have uh, not yet been shelved as India was ready to have a relook at uh, the co-development of the jet if an appropriate cost-sharing formula between the two countries was arrived at. Remember, India and Russia had signed an intergovernmental agreement uh, for the mega-project in 2007. 
However, it has been struck for the last 11 years as there have been serious uh, differences between the two sides on uh, sharing cost of the development of the jet technologies to be used and number of aircrafts to be produced. The cost of the project has uh, been estimated to be around uh, 2 lakh crore rupees. In breakfast news, time for a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Stay tuned. Four years of Modi government. Watch our special report on the biggest indirect tax reform in the history of India. Goods and Services Tax, GSD. It is the most significant economic reform in independent India. It will be a challenge for tax evaders. Now it will not be easy uh, for the uh, evasion of tax or evasion of uh, transactions. आप इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स को स्ट्रांग बनाओगे उसमें लीकेज को रोकोगे तो जीएसटी इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स को स्ट्रांग करने का बहुत अच्छा मूव है फोर इयर्स ऑफ मोदी गवर्नमेंट ओनली ऑन राज्यसभा टेलीविजन वेलकम बैक आफ्टर द ब्रेक ऑन टू समाज न्यूज नाउ वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एम वेंकैया नायडू हैज आस्क्ड मेडिकल प्रोफेशनल्स टू बी एम्फेट empathetic towards their patients while giving treatment. Addressing the 30th convocation of Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University in Chennai, he asked the doctors to serve in rural areas for a specific time period. He advised the doctors to have regular interaction with the family members of patients. The vice president also said that universities must offer the best learning environment to the students and stressed on the need to learn from the best minds in the world. He also said that the quality of education in medical colleges is the lifeblood of India's health future. He also added that India is increasingly becoming a preferred destination for medical care. With the system is expanding and the government as well as private sector is focusing on increasing the number of medical colleges, the essential question that we need to ask ourselves is about the quality of medical education. I feel the time has come that we should open up. We have already opened up. We have to open up further to the private sector. Let there be competition between private sector and public sector. After all, who is private? They are our, our own people. But only thing is that you must have proper regulation. But I also would like to caution the authorities. Regulation should not become a strangulation. The regulation is to benefit, to see monitor, to have transparency and to have accountability in the medical institution is very much important for any checkup or any operation. But now I'm happy to see, thanks to the effort by the Indian doctors, that patients from Africa, patients from Arabia, patients from Bangladesh, even patients from West, they're all coming to India. It is cheaper here now and safer here. Even in America, you might have seen in the recent magazines, I mean, America, American people are preferring Indian doctors there, NRIs. Why? Because of the knowledge, because of the skills, because of the attention, because of the service. So keep that in mind. We must try to excel in our life. Not being an ordinary doctor should not be satisfied. You must think of excelling. You must get a name. And news uh, from Mumbai now. Torrential rains uh, lashed to Mumbai and neighboring areas are causing waterlogging at several places and submerging uh, rail tracks on some routes. A road over bridge in Ghat Koper area was closed for vehicular traffic as a precautionary measure after a crack was spotted in one of its pillars. Now, several roads uh, were waterlogged and rail tracks also submerged at some places as the heavy rains uh, con continued in the city and the suburbs. And the Met Department has a predicted heavy rains in the city today as well. News from Japan now. At least uh, 85 people have been killed and 50 others are missing due to flooding and landslides owing to record rainfall in the western parts of the country. The 2 million people have been forced to flee their homes after record rains pounded the western parts of Japan triggering widespread flooding and deadly landslides. Since Thursday, parts of western Japan have received three times the usual rainfall for the whole of July. 
Record rainfalls in various parts of the country have caused rivers to burst their banks and the Japan Met Agency has upgraded its alert system to the highest level in large areas of western Japan. And uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said uh, that uh, 54,000 personnel have been mobilized for search and rescue efforts. News from Thailand now, where the operation to rescue remaining boys and their coach from a flooded cave in northern Thailand has uh, resumed this morning. But heavy rain is threatening to further complicate the mission. Now, four of the 12 boys were extracted uh, from the Thang Luang cave network in uh, the Chiang Rai province on Sunday evening. However, the operation was suspended overnight to allow oxygen tanks to be refilled. The four boys who were taken to a hospital for further medical examination are said to be in good health. The group have been trapped in the cave since 23rd of June. But rescue teams do not have an ab abundance of time because the rain began to fall on Sunday and more rain is forecast throughout the coming days, which could undo the ongoing efforts to drain in the flooded cave where the other boys and their coach remain trapped. And in more international news, North Korea has neglected the outcome of two days of talks with U.S. officials in Pyongyang. In comments released just hours after U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo departed from Pyongyang, after two days of talks with North Korean officials, Pyongyang said that the attitude of American negotiators had been regrettable and that the results of the talks are extremely worrisome. North Korea said that its firm steadfast resolve to give up its nuclear program may falter after the U.S. demanded unilateral denuclearization during talks, adding that the fastest way to achieve a nuclear-free Korean peninsula was through a phased approach, rather, in which both the sides took steps at the same time. In contrast with the meetings in Pyongyang that were held in April and May, the U.S. Secretary of State did not meet with the DPKK leader Kim Jong-un, but Mike Pompeo insisted that progress was made on timeline of North Korea's denuclearization. We had uh, uh, many hours of productive conversations. Uh, these are complicated issues, uh, but we made progress on almost all of the central issues. Uh, some places a great deal of progress, other places there's still uh, more work to be done. Uh, we now have a, uh, a meeting in Pamujan set up for uh, July 12th. It could move by one day or two uh, where there will be uh, discussions between the folks responsible for the repatriation of remains. It will take place at the border. And in a major blow for British Prime Minister Theresa May, the country's Brexit minister, David Davis, and one of his deputies has resigned. Now, Davis's resignation comes days after Theresa May secured the cabinet's backing for her Brexit plan, despite claims from critics that it was soft. Junior Minister Stephen Baker also quit shortly after Davis. In his resignation letter, Davis said that the government's negotiating approach will lead to further demands for concessions from Brussels, adding that general direction of policy will leave Britain in a weak negotiating position. Theresa May responded to the resignation letter saying that she was extremely sorry that he was leaving but would like to thank him warmly for everything that he has done to shape our departure from the EU. Davis was appointed to the post in 2016 and was responsible for neg negotiating the UK's EU withdrawal. Now let's take a look at what all is happening in the Football World Cup in Russia. So the stage really is set for the semi-finals of the FIFA World Cup in Russia. So my colleague Tina Jha brings you this detailed report on what the lineup is. Take a look. We are now in the most exciting part of the World Cup. The semi-final lineup is complete. It's France, Belgium, England and Croatia. An all European lineup. Talking about the team that made it to the semi-finals first, France. The 1998 champions beat Uruguay to enter the last four of the competition. Belgium joined them next when they beat five times champions Brazil in a thrilling encounter, also ending South American participation at this World Cup. England came next when they beat Sweden 2-0 on their way to making history, entering the semi-final for the first time since 1990. The fourth team in the semi-finals is Croatia, who beat host Russia on penalties 
ending their dream run. France will now take on Belgium in the first semi-final on the 10th of July at the St. Petersburg Stadium. Belgium and France both together reached the World Cup semi-finals last in 1986, though on that occasion, the draw kept them apart. They did, however, meet in the third place playoff, where France triumphed for two. In the second semi-final, England will take on Croatia on the 11th of July at the Luzhniki Stadium in Moscow. Croatia proved in their quarter-final that they have nerves of steel as they won a second straight penalty shootout at these World Finals. While England gave their fans a thrilling match against Sweden, we will be looking forward to two enthralling games. Thank you so much, Tina, for all those details there and for all the in-depth analysis of the ongoing World Cup. Also, watch our special daily show at 7 p.m. On to some more sporting action. Well, gymnast Deepa Karmakar has a scripted history, becoming the first Indian gymnast to clinch a gold medal at a global event. Her comeback after nearly two years of a career-threatening injury at the IG uh, Gymnastics World Challenge Cup in Turkey was spot on. The 24-year-old from Tripura, who had uh, finished fourth in a vault event at the 2016 Rio Olympics, scored 14.15 uh, uh, to win the top prize. She also topped the qualification with a score of 13.40. Deepa Karmakar had suffered an injury after the Rio Olympics and she had undergone a surgery. She was initially confident of making a comeback at the Commonwealth Games, but her rehabilitation took her more time than expected and she missed the Gold Coast event. And uh, President Ramnath Govind and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have congratulated Deepa Karmakar on her achievement. And on to cricket news now, India beats the host England in the 30-20 match by 7 wickets. Rohit Sharma's 30-20-100 made him the star of the match in Bristol. England scored a decent 198 runs, losing 8 wickets on the small Bristol ground. And Rohit Sharma's much-needed century made a target of 199 look ridiculously easy. With this win, India have backed the T20 series 2-1. And adding to this, Indian wicketkeeper Mahindra Singh Dhoni also became the first Indian keeper to complete 50 catches in T20s by taking five catches. Now, India will place England in the three-match one-day internationals that are starting from 12th of July in Tent Bridge. And it is an interesting lineup today at the Wimbledon because all the star players, Roger Federer, Serena Williams and Novak Djokovic will play their opponents at the All England Club. Defending champion Roger Federer faces 22nd seed Adrian Mariano and two-time champion Rafael Nadal plays Jiri Wesley. Whereas three-time champion Novak Djokovic plays Karen Kachanov. Serena Williams, the seven-time champion, plays a Russian qualifier, Rodina. And the only remaining women's top 10 seed, Carolina Pliskova, plays world number 20, Kiki Burtons. And with that, we come to this uh, end of this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day ahead.